and the biggest hype is for Hyundai. I'm about to show you the world's best robots concentrated in one place, especially the future of Hyundai factory in Atlanta, Georgia at CES. Welcome to Hyundai. This is the most amount of robots you will see anywhere concentrated in one place in CES. And these are the same amount invested in the factory of Georgia, near Atlanta, Georgia, where they're manufacturing the cars and how their factories have these automated robots working together by Boston Dynamics. So Hyundai is partnering with none other than Boston Dynamics. They are so powerful. I saw them lifting the one of the he heaviest weight I've seen. With three fingers. Twenty three kilograms going through it. Yes, and it'll do five hundred cases an hour stretch out. Wow. I'm giving a pallet right now. But it's highly customizable. And this is how their dog style robots has evolved. 2007, 2014, and now 2016. This guy, which is very similar to what you will see here. So these robot dogs can climb the stairs. Hyundai acquired 80% of equity in Boston Dynamics in 2021. Since then, they have been collaborating together and bringing one of the biggest innovations we have seen in robotics. These robots, whether it's a dog style robot or the Atlas robot, which is popular for doing backflips, can rotate 360 degrees. Multiple parts of the robots are flexible, This dance was phenomenal because last year everyone said China is ahead because of Unitree dance dominating last CES, but this year it's Boston Dynamics. Okay, so now I've become a factory worker in Hyundai factory in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm wearing something called Exible Arms. The idea is when your shoulders are up working on cars, you can work for longer period of time without putting burden on your arms and shoulders. As a factory worker now in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm connecting the knobs below this car and it's so automated. As soon as all those knobs are connected, the light turns on to notify me that things are going right. And along with that, there is a robot, the robot dog you saw. It's helping me because it's gonna come to my place and check with image recognition that all the work I did was correct. These small things can lift the whole car and move it around. The slam can move the car. Wow. This charger auto automatically goes into the charger and you can remote it from your home and it's mind blowing. Available 9 to 6 p.m. All you have to do is park and sit in the car. Don't even have to come out to plug the charger in. Careful, the robot is moving to begin charging. This is an integrated demonstration of the autonomous vehicle yeah. with the ACRS. Yeah, image recognition is yeah. recognizing it and live and takes a, takes a bit of time, but it's pretty really accurate. It's actually slowed down double for the show. It works twice as fast as this Really? One. Wow. So it uses cameras and uh, pressure sensors to uh, find the charging port and to connect it to the charging port. Uh, so the vehicle doesn't even need any specific spot position. As long as it's within the vicinity, it will find it with the cameras. And how fast is the charger? charger? Uh, it can get to 80% in 18 minutes and a little over 30 minutes to 100%. Very Brilliant. Fast. Okay, there we go. It's in. It's really automatic. You never touch the mint. You don't have to get out of the car. Yeah, mind blowing. More flying cars and helicopters coming from Korea after Hyundai. Fully battery operated, all EV flying car. So, of course, I mean, China has it running in production, but Korea, it's in testing phase.
by this company called Sambo Motors Group. You know which LiDAR is used by Hyundai? It's 1G LiDAR. So I'll stand right in front of the sensor and the, it can tell the depth. Uh, where do you see the depth in the image, by the way? So you don't see the depth uh, because you have this map. This is called point cloud. Point cloud. Yeah, this is the point cloud. Then the point cloud gives the data to the processor. So this is uh, basically our automotive LiDAR and it's based on TOF, which is time of flight uh, principle. So what it does is it emits a light which is invisible to human eye and it uh, bounces back towards the same uh, LiDAR and the time it takes from one place to the uh, emit and the uh, bounce back it's the calculation done, uh, how much distance is between object and the LiDAR itself. This is the robot we saw in Jensen's keynote at NVIDIA. So, Dhruv, can you talk about how Solotech, the software, is fine-tuning the hardware? Yes. So, as Jensen said, now physical AI is becoming the ultimate form of AI. And this cute little robot here uh, needs to do more than just making noises. So we're able to use solo tech to make it walk. It also plays piano. It can also interact with guests and kind of like Disney's Olaf. Maybe if you saw recently, uh, it's able to connect with guests and able to give them a tour of a location. So one of our favorite partners to work with is Open Droids here. Awesome. And Sam is going to share more information. Sam, can you talk about Open Droids? What's the idea of this robots and how solo tech has helped you? Absolutely. So uh, Open Droids is all about uh, creating open source robots. Uh, if it's not open, it's not your droid. So that's that's our uh, main model, our vision. So uh, Solotech also does open source uh, models and fine tuning of these models. Uh, they help us completely fine tune uh, uh, for a specific use case. So Open Droids does custom robotic solutions for uh, specific use cases. For example, hospitality, healthcare food and beverages kind of aspect as well. And uh, it requires uh, precise motions of the arms and precise actions trained specifically for the companies, right? So that's where uh, we provide the hardware. So it comes in with the models, and software, everything. It's a combined effort. And uh, we try to uh, bring robots out onto the out from the labs and actually deploy onto the ground and uh, collect a lot of data, which is just closing the data gap and winning the market in that aspect as well. So what's the biggest use case and what audience you're targeting? Uh, biggest use case I feel is towards uh, small scale industries and high language, uh, high businesses. So uh, people are more focused towards warehouse robotics, but they're not focused towards uh, these really Chinese solutions like uh, hospitality and healthcare. So in hotels, the robots can be doing cleaning and do as work as a receptionist at the same time. So same time at the same time. So it can same be, reward. Yeah, same. Uh, so it, it works part time on both sides. So. <laughs> Maybe at the booth of Sin Image, they're creating synthetic data for your AI models. So can you please talk more, more about it? How do you create synthetic images, uh, synthetic data? Yeah. So two kinds of synthetic data. One we're doing is like documents, tabular kinds of things. So we say PII with no P. What does so it mean? personally identifiable information, but uh -huh. there was never a person. We didn't extract it from a person. We didn't take a person and take their name off. So banks, hospitals, whatever, the data is safe. So there was never a person involved. Interesting. So without people, pixel by pixel, detailed image, synthetically generated. Okay, well, so then the other side is, is the image data that we do. Ah. And so the people data will be things like health records or you know, medical records, banking information, tech tax space. records. That's can text be, based. Can be text based and we can give you like PDFs, we can give you handwritten forms, all those kinds of things. But there's no actual people ever involved. God, so the data, there's no problem with uh, GDPR, there's no problem with HIPAA. There were no people. <laughs> so then the other side is the image side where we're creating synthetic images to train computer vision models. Mm -hmm. And on that side, we're using no generative AI, which is a big deal for the AI companies because you end up with this sort of copy of a copy problem that the information, I'm manipulating it. And so what we're doing is we're generating them from physics-based 3D models. And that lets us do things like not just the image, but also we can simulate LiDAR. So you can get the depth in the image. 
The other thing it means is that the images are per perfectly labeled because we know where every pixel in the image is. We know whether that was part of something in the foreground or a bird flying through, and we know that the bird was much closer to the camera than the bridge behind it, what have you. When did you realize that there's huge demand for images like these, and how do you create these images? So we've been doing robotics and simulation as Geisel software for a long, long time. So this Simage is a product that came out of that. As Geisel software, we had this project with NASA where they said, look, we want to make the rovers on Mars more autonomous. Because you have this problem with Mars. It's so far away, and at the furthest, it can be 22 light minutes from Earth. So at the speed of light, when you try to control this robot, think of it with a, like a remote control, right? It takes 22 minutes until it gets your signal. Now it runs and crashes into a rock. It's 22 minutes more before you get the image back that it got stuck in a rock. So at the time you were doing reverse, you were like doing image recognition, now you're creating image. NASA going, we want to train our models. Can you make the synthetic data to help us train our models? And we realized, oh, there's a bunch of other people who are doing this that don't have to do it on Mars. Ah, for AI. Yeah. And what are your biggest customers, if you can name? Banks, are, it's really anyone training computer vision models. And a lot of that right now is in robotics. Next, Snapdragon's concept car, which takes us to the future with ray tracing integrated in the car itself. That means the graphics of the games you want to play actually show us the traces of all the rays and lights are way better with graphics coming from Snapdragon. One of the coolest concepts they showed in this car was when you are driving was, let's say you're driving, you see this truck, you want to buy flowers for your wife. Now, without leaving your hands from the steering wheel, you can check the hours of operation with Gemini integrated in the car. Gemini will look up for this website, phone number can call for you all through the car. And of course, Qualcomm is also working on their humanoid robot, which can separate apples, oranges, or any kind of fruit, irrespective of where you put them. At CES, you see so many unreleased products and vehicles. One of them is Cosmera. This one is from China, made in Suzhou and in Germany. It's in production. In two years, it'll be released. And this is just a prototype for now. And the coolest part about this car is this is giving Tesla features to a sports car or sports car features to an EV like Tesla and with AR and VR. That's what they told me so far. Rest, rest is mystery. And now on this side, this is one of the coolest defense startup I've seen. So the idea is this right here, you see, it's going to attack the drones that enter in anyone's country without being recognized. So drone comes on a helicopter after B. And some of the drones caught are here. To float it down safely. 